Double OS payments, PLUS, $890 GIS cash bonus? The jaw-dropping announcement from the Canada Revenue Agency has instantly become a national talking point. For the millions of Canadian retirees struggling with rising costs, it could provide a crucial financial lifeline. But the Liberal government's unprecedented move to turbocharge retirement benefits has also detonated a fierce debate over its costs and implications. According to details unveiled by the Trudeau administration, all old age security, OS recipients across Canada will soon receive a massive multi-billion dollar cash infusion, hitting their bank accounts. In the upcoming May payment period, retirees can expect to collect double their regular monthly OS pension payments. However, that's not all. Those also qualifying for the Guaranteed Income Supplement, GS, will receive an extra $890 bonus payout on top of their doubled OS funds. The Liberal government frames the OS slash GIS payment escalations as badly needed financial relief and stimulus for Canadian seniors being economically pummeled by intense inflationary pressures. As costs for essentials like housing, food, and healthcare soar, pumping billions in new cash flow aims to help retirees retain their purchasing power and overall financial security. However, the announcement is already igniting a firestorm of controversy and polarizing fallout. Fiscal hawks have pounced, slamming the payment increases as wildly unaffordable and unsustainable spending that will balloon Canada's federal deficits and debt load. Seniors' advocacy groups cautiously welcome any new funds but demand even larger overhauls to retirement finance policies. Meanwhile, political foes accuse Trudeau of cynically attempting to buy votes from retirees ahead of the 2024 election. As Canadian seniors eagerly await their double-stuffed payments and bonus cash, the broader national debate is only just beginning over the generational impacts of this government pension gamut. Is it justifiable economic triage for struggling retirees or fiscal irresponsibility endangering future prosperity? The battle lines are drawn. The Trudeau administration's bombshell decision to dramatically increase old age security and guaranteed income supplement payments has detonated a political and economic shockwave across Canada. By temporarily doubling the monthly OS pension amounts, and providing a special $890 top-up for low-income GIS recipients, the federal government has committed to an over $15 billion cash infusion directly into retirees' pocketbooks virtually overnight. While promoted as urgently needed financial relief for seniors battered by soaring inflation, the costly package has ignited blistering condemnation and debate over its true affordability, motivations, and ramifications. From a fiscal policy perspective, the OAS-slash-GIS payment surge raises alarms over ballooning government deficits and debt loads at an already perilous juncture. The Canadian Taxpayers' Federation estimates the double OAS payments alone will cost $8 billion for just the May period, combined with over $5 billion for the $6 million GIS bonus top-ups and Ottawa's existing funding gap. They project the total package could single-handedly increase Canada's 2024 budgetary shortfall past $75 billion. Such stratospheric deficit spending amplifies warnings that the Trudeau government is recklessly jeopardizing the nation's long-term economic and financial stability. With Canada already facing structural fiscal imbalances amid rising debt servicing costs, Critics warn continued cash sprees could ultimately trigger uncontrolled budgetary shortfalls, spiraling inflation, potential credit downgrades, and even solvency risks. This perilous trajectory could severely hamper the country's ability to fund other critical policy priorities and productive investments in areas like healthcare, climate resiliency, education, infrastructure, and more. From an economic perspective, Critics also caution the payment escalation's risk fanning inflationary flames by flooding consumer markets with excess cash. By supercharging over $15 billion in new purchasing power virtually overnight, some forecasters warn it could overwhelm the supply of goods and services, driving up prices even further at a time when stamping out inflation remains paramount. 
the Bank of Canada may be forced to hike interest rates even more aggressively than currently projected to offset the OAS GIS stimulus, potentially plunging the economy into a severe recession and undermining any intended relief for vulnerable retirees. However, those backing the payment increases argue they finally provide a substantive financial lifeline for millions of underfunded retirees and impoverished Canadian seniors facing destitution amidst raging inflation and cost-of-living pressures. The combination of double OS payments plus GIST top-ups effectively provide raises of over $1,000 per month for the lowest-income seniors struggling below the poverty line, allowing Canada's elderly to slip into homelessness, hunger, or forego necessary medicine due to insufficient funds would represent an unconscionable moral and humanitarian crisis in a prosperous society, proponents argue. While costly, the payment escalations aim to uphold a baseline livelihood and dignity for society's most vulnerable. From a social policy perspective, the OAS GIS overhaul magnifies fundamental questions around the adequacy of Canada's public pension system amid rapid demographic shifts. Currently, over 750,000 single seniors rely solely on maximum OAS GIS payments that leave them below Canada's $30,000 annual poverty threshold before increases, a figure projected to swell as the baby boomer population ages and retiree ranks expand. Advocacy groups like the National Pensioners Federation view the payment hikes as a double-edged sword. While providing urgently needed temporary relief, it also exposes the threadbare inadequacy of relying predominantly on government pension programs to underpin retirement financial security. Without larger systemic reforms, organizations warn retiree poverty and destitution could escalate to humanitarian crisis levels. To tackle these challenges, they are driving an ambitious multi-pronged agenda prioritizing the expansion of alternate pension vehicles that compel greater personal savings and self-funded contributions. Central to this are gradually increasing mandatory CPP contributions to boost future payouts while incentivizing growth in workplace retirement plans and supplemental investment schemes like RRSPs. By diversifying retirement funding sources and individual self-reliance, they aim to reduce overextending public finances and future government bailout risks. Those with more conservative economic philosophies have pushed back staunchly against over-reliance on federal subsidies. Free market commentators caution Canada already fosters an unhealthy culture of entitlement and dependence on the state through programs like OS and GS. They argue continually expanding these taxpayer handouts without stringent means testing disincentivizes personal fiscal responsibility like saving and planning for retirement. From this view, the payment escalations set a precedent of having the government shoulder more burdens previously meant for supplemental income and top-ups. This could enable Canadians to reduce saving and make riskier financial decisions under the assumption of a limitless public pension bailout safety net. Such moral hazard breeds a vicious cycle requiring ever higher future taxes and debt loads to compensate, stifling economic productivity and growth. The timing and motivations behind announcing the payment increases have also faced harsh criticism from opposition parties sensing foul political play. With Canada's next federal election slated for October 2024, the cash infusion starting just months beforehand aligns perfectly with campaign season. Conservative opponents have condemned the helicopter money move as crass vote buying using borrowed funds in a desperate bid by Trudeau's liberals to reverse sliding poll numbers. Appealing to retirees with a disproportionate electoral turnout is viewed as central to the government's embattled strategy showering seniors with billions in temporary benefits and bonuses now passes the liabilities to future generations through deficits. Meanwhile, the immediate windfall conveniently hits key voting demographics just in time for them to head to the polls. In defending their actions, members of Trudeau's inner circle have pushed back firmly against such partisan attacks and claims of impropriety. They insist the OS GIS payment increases stem directly from analyzing economic data 
and projections showing an urgent crisis confronting millions of Canada's most financially insecure seniors facing potential destitution and humanitarian emergencies under scorching inflation rates. Beyond the heated political firefights, economic analysts are scrutinizing the OAS-GIS cash injections' broader monetary policy impacts across Canada. With over $15 billion set to hit the consumer economy rapidly, Forecasters project it will unleash a significant wave of new spending across real estate, retail, investment, and lending sectors sensitive to retirees' cash flows, while providing a welcome booster shot for housing, auto, small business, and credit markets. Many worry the liquidity surge could exacerbate inflation further by supercharging consumer demand beyond existing supply constraints. This raises the risks of supply shocks and price spirals in certain concentrated areas like housing that could negate any income gain seniors initially benefited from. 